or watching the Fox 5 Morning News at 7. Election day is just a couple of weeks away, so exactly what does that mean for your finances? That's all over the campaign trail, I'll tell you that right now. Joining us this morning, VP of Wilsey Asset Management, our friend Chase Wilsey. Chase, good morning. Good morning. Listen, it's every candidate, every word coming out of their mouth, like who is going to benefit your pocketbook. It's all about the money. It's all about this. Um, are there money moves that you should be making during an election year? You know, many times I tell people elections are so emotional. I yes. mean, people get so wrapped up in the political divide, essentially. And, and ultimately, there's not much that should be done this year. There's really no policy changes that will be implemented right. in 2024. So I tell people, be patient, you know, wait and see what happens. There might be things that need to be done maybe next year. But right now, there, there's no changes that are going to really take hold. You mentioned that it's so emotional, and we talk a lot about how, how trading and stocks and the financial mm -hmm. market is emotional, politics is emotional. Where is the economy? I mean, you live this day in, day yeah. out. Where is the economy now, stock markets, and, and, and in terms of the country and the finances? If you ask people, yeah. half the people say, it's the worst, it's horrible, mm -hmm. and the other side, oh, we're doing fine. Where is it really right now? You know, it's such a hard thing. When you look at the economy, you, you can pinpoint one specific data point at any point in history and say the economy is terrible because of this one pinpoint sure. here. When I look at it as a whole, I, I say the economy is okay. I mean, we have decent growth. We are coming down on inflation. Inflation right. has really been the hardest thing that we've seen from the economic standpoint. Yeah. The labor market's been strong. The stock market's been strong. But inflation, again, yeah. yeah, I mean, inflation is really the, the big point that has really been difficult for, for many, many people. So based on what you're saying, because the next question said, should you sell stocks because of the election? I'm leaning no. <laughs> You're leaning right. I mean, that, that's the right <laughs> answer. When you look back over history, I mean, you, you get the same thing. You know, I, I was doing this when uh, Trump was elected in 2016. I was doing yes. this when Biden was elected in 2020. Yes. And you get half people like, oh, my gosh, if we go to cash. And if you look back over history, I, I actually went back to 1926. Yeah. Yeah. And I will tell you, Democrats have an average return of 14% per year, and Republicans have a 9% return on average per year. And it sounds like a big discrepancy, yeah. but there is, I'm going to say, a really limited amount of data. There's only been 17 presidents when you go back to 1926. Sure. And also, too, there's factors that people were in the wrong place at the wrong time or the right place at the right time. For example, Herbert Hoover, who was a Republican, took over in 1929. He had an average annual return of negative 27%. So that really brings down the Republicans' data, even right. though that wasn't really his fault. Yeah. Bill Clinton, on the other hand, a Democrat, he had an average return of 17 plus percent per year. He was in the right place at the right time yep. with the technology boom. So I look at this and I say, yeah, I mean, Democrats historically have had that. But the ultimate thing I tell you is if you sold because of a primary candidate was not your political party, you were still wrong. And if you look over history, you want to be invested in the right companies, they'll do well regardless of who's in office. It's so smart. I feel like we can't stress that enough. Look at the numbers, yeah. look at the facts, look at the statistics because they do not lie. Mm -hmm. That is where the facts are. Uh, how will this year's election impact taxes? Yeah, I mean, this is really, I, I think, a big one That's because yes. when you look back, uh, the 2017 Tax Cuts and Jobs Act that came about when, in, in fact, 2018. That will sunset in 2026. So what okay. that means is what we currently have will go back essentially to where we were in 2017. Now, what that means is a lot of the tax rates would be increasing. Mm -hmm. A lot of your money would now be taxed at those higher rates because you'll climb up in those rates much, much quicker than you did now. Right. But there will be here in California, if you own a home, the SALT deduction is the state and local tax deduction. Those would come back. The standard deduction would decrease. There's a lot of potential impacts. And this is what I'm talking about. In 2025, you're going to have to keep a close eye on this because I believe President Trump, if he comes in, he's going to want to preserve that bill. President, a potential President Harris, if she came in, she would likely want to get rid of that bill. So that is going to have a big impact yeah. on what your taxes look like come 2026. And there may be some big tax planning you'll have to do in 2025 to adjust for those potential changes. And that's why we have you here to explain <laughs> it all. Chase Wilsey, we thank you so much. Thank you. All right, bye. we'll be right back.